We are in for a really interesting 2020 NBA All-Star Game in Chicago. These teams are as hard to pick as they've been in years, especially the Eastern Conference. The first look at the NBA fan vote was just released, and in this video, I'm going to reveal my ballot for the 2020 All-Star Game and then compare it to what the fans think. Hey guys, it's Casey Kiernan, host of the AM Hoops YouTube channel. Be sure to hit subscribe because we're growing this channel. Also, hit me with a follow on Instagram at am hoops and over on twitter at casey kiernan first this is how i pick my players one thing i don't say i'm gonna make x player an all-star because his team is good so i have to pick someone off that team i think that's lazy also i don't say x player gets a spot because he's been so good in the past maybe i don't watch too many of his games this year but i know he's good so i'm just gonna put him in without looking i also think that's lazy i pick my all-stars as the best players in the league this year so let's start with the west my starting backcourt james harden and luka Doncic. this one a no-brainer pretty much a lock my starting front court, LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, and Anthony Davis. While the starters don't require a ton of explanation, the West Reserves do. Guard number one, Damian Lillard. I know his team has gone through their struggles, but he is tying his career high in points per game and a career high in assists per game. So Dame is not the reason that this team is slumping. Guard number two, Donovan Mitchell. This will be his first ever All-Star selection. Mitchell is averaging close to 26 points, five boards and five assists per 36. That means he has taken that next jump that we thought maybe was gonna happen last year, but it's come here in year three. First front court player is Nikola Jokic. His numbers are down across the board, but when his team needs a lift in the fourth quarter, He's the guy they go to. He leads them in fourth quarter scoring, plus his plus 9-1 net rating makes him the biggest impact player on the Nuggets. My second front court player is Paul George. His numbers are all-star level despite having to share the offensive workload with Kawhi, Montrez Harrell, Lou Williams, plus PG carries the Clippers whenever Kawhi is resting. My last front court player in the West is Carl Anthony Towns. Dominant as usual in a career year from downtown. My first wild card, Rudy Gobert. He's still the best rim protector in the West. Choosing between Gobert and Ingram was tough, but Rudy's net rating because of his defense crushed Brandon Ingram. And my second wild card for the West is Chris Paul. His numbers are not career highs, but he is picking his spots. I like how he's deferring to younger players. It's part of the mentorship role that he is filling on the Thunder. But in the fourth quarter, similar to Jokic, CP3 is the reason why they win more than they lose in close games. He scored 91 points in the clutch this year, first in the NBA. My West snubs included Brandon Ingram, CJ McCollum, Russell Westbrook, who I think is just too inefficient to make the All-Star team, Devin Booker, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, Andrew Wiggins, Rashawn Holmes, and Montrez Harrell. All right, so let's get into the East. This is gonna make a lot of you mad, but I truly believe this, and I will walk you through my logic for each and every pick. My starting backcourt is Kemba Walker and Ben Simmons. Kemba, career best scoring efficiency, fits great with the C's. Simmons is averaging 14, seven and nine on 50 plus percent shooting. And Ben Simmons is playing defense at an all NBA type level. And for me, defense is an important part of the equation. My starting front court, Pascal Siakam, top five MVP for me before he was injured, Giannis Antetokounmpo, no brainer, and Joel Embiid, best rim protector in the entire league, and he's averaging almost 24 points per game, and he looks like somehow he's got more to give, which is crazy. All right, so let's get to the reserves. My first spot goes to Malcolm Brogdon of the Pacers. This is his first all-star selection. Yes, he is averaging career highs in most statistical categories because he is getting more minutes with that bigger role in Indiana. But this guy has the sixth best assist percentage in the entire NBA, not just the East. And he plays above average defense. My second guard is Spencer Dinwiddie. This is his first all-star selection. Dinwiddie is the reason the Nets have not tanked without Kyrie. He's having a career year in points, his second best year in assists and rebounds. And I know he doesn't shoot the three ball well, but Dinwiddie can go to the rim with the best of them. He doesn't shoot too many threes, so it doesn't kill the Nets, and it works for him. My first front court player is Jimmy Butler, and I'll just say this, 
only LeBron, Doncic, Russell Westbrook, and Jimmy Butler are averaging 20 points, six boards, and six assists, and we know how Jimmy Butler brings it on defense. My second front court player, Jason Tatum, his first all-star selection. His on off is in the 95th percentile on defense and in the 85th percentile on offense. He is an all-star level difference maker. I know a lot of people are picking between Tatum and Brown. To me, it's no contest, it's Tatum. My third front court player is Damanis Sabonis of the Pacers. It's his first all-star selection too. Speaking of on-off numbers, Sabonis is in the 91st percentile on defense and the 89th percentile on offense. Plus, he is second in double-doubles this year only to Giannis in the entire league, not just the East. Now for my wall cards. My first is Bam Adebayo, his first All-Star. He's having a career year in almost every major statistical category, and you know it, he plays defense. Adebayo is one of only two players in the whole league, averaging over 15 points, 10 boards, three assists, and a block and a steal per game. Oh, the other guy averaging those numbers? That's just Giannis, whatever. My last all-star spot goes to Devontae Graham. Yes, and that means I don't have Trey Young on my all-star ballot, and here's why. Let's just compare Devontae Graham to Trey Young. They both play elite offense, but Devontae has made the second most threes in the league this year, only to James Harden. Trey is down at eighth at 106 threes total. And even though he takes and makes more threes, Devontae has a better three-point percentage, 39.1 to 36.8. How about total assists? We know how great of a passer Trey Young is. Devontae is at third in the league at 287. Trey Young at sixth in the NBA. Yes, Trey Young scores a lot more points than Devontae Graham, but Devontae shares the offense with others on the Hornets like Terry Rozier. Trey is like basically the Hawks entire offense, especially for that long stretch with John Collins out. And then there's the other side of the ball. Trey Young's horrific defense easily knocked him into the snub category for me. The Hawks allow 7.3 more points with him on the floor. That is the ninth percentile in defense. Another snub, Bradley Beal. How about him on defense? I know his whole team doesn't try. That's sort of the culture of the year there in DC, but this dude sets the culture. Plus in terms of on off percentile, he's in the first percentile. That means there's no one worse. Other snubs, Zach Levine, Chris Middleton, Andre Drummond, Tobias Harris, and Kyle Lowry. All right, so now let's take a look at the fan vote. But remember, fan vote is only 50% of the starters, 25% is the players, and 25% is the media. So just because a guy's on this list does not mean he's gonna make it for sure. So as we look at the list, and the front court in the West first, pretty predictable until there. Number six, Kristaps Porzingis. For me, he shouldn't be in here. He's got career lows across the board since his rookie year. And I know Rick Carlisle and Mark Cuban say, but he's filling a role. Right now, that role is not all star level for me. My next dispute is from Carmelo Anthony there at number eight. Don't get me wrong, the best comeback story this year in the NBA, but his numbers, especially in the amount of games he's played so far, are not all-star caliber in a loaded Western Conference. And for Dwight Howard at 10, also a great comeback, but same reasoning there as Melo. All right, the West backcourt now. Number four, Steph Curry. Duh. Number five, Russell Westbrook. We said it before, but he is super inefficient. He's shooting 23% from downtown. That would be the worst three-point shooting percentage of all time, minimum five attempts per game. Number six, D'Angelo Russell. Yes, he's had big moments, including a 52-point game during a one and nine stretch early in the year, but he has missed a ton of time on the worst team in the NBA. Number eight, Alex Caruso. This one is obvious. He should be a team captain along with Giannis. It should not be LeBron, it should be Caruso and Giannis picking teams on TNT, yeah. And number 10, John ja Morant, a fun year for sure for Ja, despite disappearing at times, rookie of the year for sure. East front court, my disputes start at number six with Taco Fall. On the other hand, maybe it should just be Taco and Alex Crusoe picking the teams live on TNT. If you have time, go check out our list of players with the biggest cult following, links right up there. Next up, Gordon Hayward, great comeback story, missed just too much time. East backcourt, Kyrie, also absent for long stretches. 
And my last one there is Derrick Rose at four, but actually this surprised me. His stats per 100 possessions are really, really good. Like all-star level good. If you compare them to his last all-star game in 2011, 2012, they're almost identical. But in the end, his defense isn't up to par and he doesn't play a big enough role on this Pistons team. Dwayne Casey has given him just about 24 minutes per night. If anything, they should trade D-Rose to a contender so he can finally get that ring. So that's my all-star ballot and what the fans think so far. We're gonna get more fan updates until these starters are announced on January 23rd. And this all leads up to the 2020 All-Star Game, February 16th in Chicago. Support AM Hoops and click subscribe. Don't miss a weekly NBA video.